the big question today in LLMs is if more parameters actually makes models any better. There are tuning schemes like DPO and a number of ways you can mix these together like mixture of experts. And we know that GPT-4 currently uses eight massive individual experts, uh, each having 220 billion parameters. GPT-4 is pretty good, but then again, Mistral has had huge leaps in performance and capability with models like Mistral, where they have also implemented uh, their own implementation of mixture of experts. Now, the thing is, what if we had fewer experts, but what if each of these experts had a massive parameter count? What could we do then with open source LLMs? Would they compete head to head with GPT-4? Would they actually be better than Mixtral, which uses a larger number of less capable or just smaller models built on less parameters? That's the question I want to answer today with this incredibly cool model called Giant Hydra 240B MOE, which as it states is a mixture of experts model spanning a total of 240 billion parameters. The question here is, does it work? Uh, can I even run it? Can anyone run this unless you have access to uh, thousands of dollars or thousands of H100 GPUs? And what does this mean for LLMs in general, both in terms of open source and what we know these models can actually do? Welcome to AI Flux. Let's get into it. So to give credit where credit's due, I was initially tipped off about this model by Newt Yegesberg on Twitter. Now, what's interesting is there's very little information about this model right now. It's been released. He's messed around with it but I think there's some really interesting things to unpack here. And what's pretty cool is, uh, although yes, you need a lot of GPU power to run this model, I think it's much more reasonable than you would initially think. So the Hucking Face page gives us some more details about this really cool model, uh, aside from just the name being, you know, Giant Hydra, which I'm pretty surprised no one's named an MOE model this already, but the name is cool and the, 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 the picture is kind of cool. So this is how this model is introduced. Yes, you read that correctly. This is a four by 70 billion parameter mixture of experts model with 240 billion parameters in total. I doubt there is any way that I will have the benchmarks run here anytime soon to be on the leaderboard, but I am looking into renting time on RunPod to get the scores myself and put them there. This model should cover multiple different disciplines and behaviors, well as I try to use and gate correctly a wide set of models, including one I fine-tuned my Itself, which we'll get into later is pretty important. This is the model card of a Transformers model that has been pushed on the hub. The model card has been automatically generated. So this wasn't really written. So the developer, as far as we know, is Newt. And obviously it hasn't been benched yet or quantized yet, but clearly he has a lot of experience building models like this. When he built this, it's kind of impressive this was done just by him because even just training a model like this is expensive and even to just have the hardware to do it would also be pretty expensive. It's licensed in Apache 2, which means you can pretty much do whatever you want with this model within reason. And it's fine-tuned from a few different models. Now, where this gets really kind of interesting is the model sources themselves. So we know GPT-4 uses eight 220 billion parameter models to make up what is now GPT-4. And the thing is, you know, each of these models kind of have their own capabilities. What's interesting here is as opposed to Mixtral's eight experts as well, this chose to use four. So basically, uh, Newt says here, I use the following four models to create an MOE that should cover multiple disciplines and do it well. So it's not generalized, it's meant to do a number of things well, which is where a mixture of experts models generally shine. I will most likely, if I can afford to do it, try this out, and if I find that it's working, I will make another variation. But these are the models they used. So there were four different models used. There was Marcaroni 70B V1, Aurora Knight 70B V1, Strix, Roof 70B, which is one that uh, Newt actually developed internally. And the last one was ICBU NPU uh, Fashion GPT 70B. Curiously, some of these don't actually have model cards. Uh, Aurora Knights is a curious one that's been pretty popular within the last month or so. So this model itself is a blend of four different models on its own. So initially a blend of Tulu 2 DPU and XWIN LM, then uh, <laughs> merged with DreamGen, and then finally merged with uh, Kimiko V270B. And basically this is just called a resultant blend. Uh, the exact settings, I'll link to this, you can see them. Uh, what's important here is this bit here. So it says, this model is good at both following instructions and producing creative, uncensored storytelling and role-playing content. This model turned out quite uncensored. You are responsible for whatever you do with it. Uh, this model was designed for, again, role-playing and storytelling. And what people are finding is that merging and even just sampling data sets that make models that are good at this 
can actually create better results when you do it with it, when you when you use this with entirely different models. So for instance, the idea of teaching an AI how to role play or how to create kind of coherent stories can actually be used to help doing math or even um, coding better, which is kind of crazy, but it makes sense because it, it's sort of a means of thinking and a means of reasoning, even though technically these models aren't reasoning. Now the next one, Strix, is pretty cool. It had a little bit of a, a burst of interest last month. And what's cool is this was built on Hugging Face Transformers, and basically um, it, it's a fine-tuned Llama 2, if we want to be straightforward. The other big reason this was used is, again, it has a strong uh, focus on logic enforcement. It's mostly intended for planning exercises. Some could say that could also mean it's actually really good at creating synthetic data to augment um, some of this, some creating models like this as well. And uh, Fashion GPT is a curious one, also one of the most popular that was used in this MOE model. Uh, effectively, it's a Llama 270B model combined with multiple adapters using a number of methods that were available at the time. The data sets involved were Puffin, Open Assistant, and Open Orca. Open Orca was, um, for quite some time, considered to be one of the most powerful models we'd seen back in uh, October of 2023. Again, a big idea of this were multi-turn conversations and uh, instruction following, which is pretty cool. And it also incorporates a lot of work by Eric Hartford, who we've covered on this channel before. So I think it's pretty cool. And really, you know, again, it's interesting to see that this one actually intends to have a system user and assistant system prompts which is pretty cool. So we have a few kind of Llama 2 fine tunes, some pretty exotic storytelling bits involved, and then sort of some generalist stuff wrapped in as well. And that's what makes up the four heads of Giant Hydra 240B. Now, has anyone actually been able to run this? I talked with a creator and basically he said that it would likely be possible to run this. And basically he said that once he's done working on the two-bit quantization, which would be the smallest version of this model, you could really make usable. You could have uh, two big GPUs for, so probably A100, 80 gigs for training, and then probably at least three A6000s for inference. So it'll be cool to see when the quants actually show up for this model. So uh, those of us who have money to dump on RunPod or Vast AI can actually mess around with it. But what's cool is there have been also some hints here um, from people trying to run this. So what's funny is there are already people saying, is it possible to even run this? And Obviously, we know the answer is yes. This guy says he has 14090, and he's not even going to try. Basically, also, he's prompting what kind of run pod you'd want. Uh, I would probably guess you want, like, a 6x A100 kind of a machine. Um, fun kind of fact about RunPod is they actually won't let you contribute GPUs unless you have at least 12 connected. This is someone trying to run it and then realizing it didn't work. Um, obviously this was kind of far before it was meant to run. This person here says, when trying to load in Transformers via web UI, I get the following error. These are really errors with this guy just getting these into the GPUs themselves. And then uh, Newt came in here and says, I have loaded it with web UI as well. I use the Transformers loader when using web UI and then set all the GPUs to max out. I'm not 100% sure if it would load using C++ or other loaders since I haven't tried those. Next time I load it up, I will screenshot my settings, but they were all default outside of GPU memory being raised to the max. Took the screenshot to check memory footprint and it was after a load via web UI. What's interesting here is we can tell that NVTOP doesn't always tell you the kinds of GPUs, but we can pretty easily assume here that these are likely um, A180 gig GPUs and he has six of them, which is Pretty cool. Yeah, you can see that these are all roughly at about 97% memory utilization, all except for this last GPU, which is pretty freaking cool. So this is the load before it ran, obviously. But uh, so yeah, so I would say this is proof that obviously the developer can at least run it. He also has this tab open with Giant Hydra and uh, not surprisingly enough, um, Merge Kit 2. So pretty cool. I can't wait to try to run this. Um, my most recent update is I now have a 4x4090 machine and uh, I did learn the hard way that you can't use ribbon risers on these for inference. Um, I'm going to plug the wonderful German engineer uh, C. Payne. He creates some of the best risers for multi-GPU machines and they work on 4090s. So um, word of warning, if you have four 4090s and you want to run them on risers, um, they will boot, they will work, but as soon as you start running anything of value, uh, you'll get AER issues and you'll have um, what in GPU 
And you'll have uh, what in the GPU realm they call um, your GPUs falling off the bus, which basically means that uh, the connection between the GPU and your server break down, and um, the NVIDIA drivers give you the nice message that your uh, GPU fell off the bus. So if you don't want your GPU to fall off the bus, if you're running more than four GPUs with risers, um, look at the link below or Google Steam Payton GPU riser. Um, they're not cheap, but they do work. And if you want to get really technical, um, you should look into what uh, PCI Express redrivers are. So uh, are you guys going to try to run this? Uh, do you think this will compete with GPT-4? Where do you think it's going to show up on the LLM leaderboard? Please put it all down in the comments. And as always, I hope you learned something from this video. If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, I'm having a blast in 2024 making these videos, and we'll see you in the next one.